Yo, what's up, guys? This is Tian Sino Akuma here with my seventeenth. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. That was terrible. Seventeenth <laughs> Katarina game. It's been several months since I made my last uh, video on YouTube, so I thought I'd show you guys an interesting one where I feed first blood and continue feeding for the rest of the game. So enjoy that. <laughs> wow, this is a terrible game. Tell me terrible start. Terrible start to a terrible game. There you go. Good. That's exactly how I want to say it. So I gave first blood to... let's see... Jarvan and Graves. And since they have the kills, they're the ones with the money. And since they don't belong in my lane, Graves is bot lane and Jarvan is jungling, I do believe. I should, um, the effects of that giving that kill should not be apparent uh, early game until later. Uh, you notice here I had my Shubo up first because I was trying to kill Jarvan. Didn't work out too well, so I missed a creep in order to leash which for Amumu. I had to leash for Amumu because Amumu had Q first, so he can't really take out jungle as easily. Anyways, back to the situation at hand. So this Cho'Gaff luckily has absolutely no assists from that battle. So basically this is a normal 1v1 for me for now until Jarvan comes out. Um, I just, I got rid of, I do, I did put on the Fog of War from my side. That way it would be a little bit more, uh, that way it would be easier for you guys to tell from my, my angle what's going on and what I see and what I do not see. There's a game going on top, they're gonna get this. Yeah, Silso doesn't have Flash. Yes, he does, but he already used it. So that's one kill right there. And so now we're back to two and two. We're even. <laughs> that was a terrible plan in the beginning. Um, what happened in the beginning was I was not with my team. And because I wasn't with my team, they initiated a fight, uh, a 2v3 fight, where they actually had the lead because they had a lot of CC since the level one fight. Unfortunately, I wasn't there, and they were missing some other players too. And when I got back to the party, the fight was already over, but I still tried to force uh, force a fight and try to uh, clean up. Unfortunately, I was not able to kill Jarvan. He had his health pot on, and uh, I got killed in the process. And Jarvan seems to be wrecking <laughs> other lanes with that extra kill he has. So Jarvan's going to be a really big issue. Here he has he's participated in all three <clears throat> kills. He has two kills and one assist, so he's definitely going to be a scary jungler. Uh, personally, I would prefer to have a um, prefer to have my lane get the kill uh, if there's an early game kill rather than the jungler. The reason why is because if the jungler is ahead, then they'll have an easier time ganking mid top bot lane. And if mid lane just has an extra kill, then I can just call my jungler to come and help help me if I'm behind if they're ahead of me. And usually, when you are a kill up on your enemy, you will be a little bit you will you'll naturally be a little bit more aggressive because you know you have an advantage. And you can use that uh, aggressiveness to your advantage by calling for a jungle gank. And I missed a lot of CS <laughs> during this thing, uh, during laning phase. It's kind of sad. And bot lane's losing, so that's unfortunately that's unfortunate. Mid lane wise, I do have more, uh, four creeps more than uh, Chogaf. I should have six or eight more than he does, but I missed too much creep. There's a gank going on top. Silso does not have a ward, and I don't think they're gonna get this. I mean, they're gonna harass him. Oh man, that damage output. Never mind, they got it. I didn't know they'd hit that hard. <laughs> Silso's so squishy. Wow. Anyway, and Silso has a ward too. He didn't put it down. Okay. This is a really basic tip. If you buy a ward and you're intending to use it against the enemy jungle, when you buy, once you buy it, once you get into game lane, immediately use it. Like. So, so held on to it because of that he got ganked. And I make a stupid mistake here. I'm farming I, and I... Well, yeah, that's my stupid mistake. Right there, like a scrub. Com terrible, terrible play right there. I got really greedy. I really wanted the minion kills because I really wanted to keep that lead I had on Cho'Gath in terms of CS. And because of uh, my greed, I got myself killed because of that. And now I'm behind in lane. I probably will need a gank from a Mumu because of that play. Now that I'm really behind, he's actually caught up in CS and pulled ahead of me, and I'm missing out on CS right now. So I'm really behind in lane now. I have to just free farm. That's all I can do, and hope I hope to pick up some kills uh, if the enemy makes some mis mistakes and I can pick up some kills and catch up a little bit. So right now I'm really behind. I have to catch up. Mumu as a jungler 
is extremely scary after level 6. His ganking potential is ridiculous because of his ult, uh, allowing him to root in a huge AoE circle end. If you go AP and Mumu, you deal a ton of damage. Which this Mumu is, he's going AP and Mumu. And he's looking to gank mid. And yeah, he backs off. They don't. Ha he doesn't have a ward, but he has no reason to stay. I have too much HP, there's no way he can harass me because I can jump around with my Shunpo. So he's just going to back off, try to maybe farm his jungle. Like, that's the best option for him right now. And <laughs> Mumu camping top. He hasn't put... Sosal hasn't put his ward down yet. Wow. Oh, he's dead again. Unless he misses it. Yeah, he missed his bandage toss. He should have seen that flash coming. Usually, when you're a jungler and you're ganking, uh, if someone doesn't blow their flash, that means they don't have their flash. And if you're able to kill them, immediately after that, the next gank, you should assume that they always have flash up. So... Moo's looking to gank Jarvan, but he does have Chogaf to help him out. Uh, I get silenced and tries to. Yeah, it's not gonna work. I do get a good ult off. I know Moo's here, and I know that. Wow, those are terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> okay, well, Chris wants to come. Oh, that's a that's a fail. Dash. Chris wants to come and gank, unfortunately. Chogaf backed off, he's already low on HP. He knows that if he gets hit, he probably will die. And Jarvan is not here, I don't know where he went. But um, I know that Chogaf backed off, so I'm just gonna free farm this lane. Uh, free farm this creep, push it up to the turret, and hopefully catch up to Chogaf as much as I can in terms of farm. Like, like even though I was behind, even though I was murdered by Chogaf because of my stupid mistake, as you can see, I have more CS than he does right now. I was able to catch up, so. I really shouldn't be greedy. I know that I can out CS people and just from pure practice of CSing, so I really shouldn't be so greedy with creep. Luckily, oh, another thing to note, uh, Renekton and Katarina are both mana-less champions, so if you play a mana-heavy champion like Amumu, uh, you can get every single blue buff, and that's gonna be extremely helpful helpful for him. He can stay in lane forever now. He can, he can stay in jungle forever now because he can cast spells forever I think someone's going bot someone's definitely going bot usually when bot lane is so aggressive like this it means that they have backup coming yeah see there's Cho'Gath that was a really nice flash and they were able to kill him with that ult and I do pick that up and I chase after him I know actually do I have flash up I do have flash up I don't, I don't go in and kill him because my skills aren't CD I mean, uh, I mean, not my skills were on CD, sorry, I wasn't paying attention, I was thinking about something else. I don't deal enough damage, so there's no reason for me to flash in and attack him if I can't guarantee a kill. There's a possibility that he can get away. In the end, that'll be me wasting a flash, uh, which could be used later very, in a much more beneficial situation. Blitzcrank is hiding here because he wants to grab uh, Jarvan and try to distract him, and maybe pull him over and pick up, uh, give us a kill while we take out Dragon as well. But Jarvan backed off, he knew that he couldn't fight us. That's so. That's always the best option. If you know that you can't contest a dragon or a baron buff, just give it to them. There's no point in attempting to con contest a dragon that you're probably not going to get and giving them a kill in the process. So you're just giving them icing on the cake and that's what you do not want. I'm going to back off right now. I know that there isn't really much creep for me to take right here and it's kind of risky for me to stay since there's Jarvan and a full HP Cho'Gath. And also I have money to buy some stuff, so yeah, I got a full hex uh, revolver from that. Bot lane is actually they caught up in terms of kills, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, nah, I mean Graves is a little bit ahead of Ezreal in terms of CS, and he's a kill ahead as well. So bot lane, in my opinion, is still losing. Ooh, are we gonna get that? No. Two eight. Oh, this doesn't look good. No I ca like notice how I don't stay in lane. Usually I stay in lane and continue farming, but I didn't have any creep, so I thought I might as well uh, go and help out. But they backed off, so I went back into lane and kept farming. I saw that Chogaf passed by here, so notice that's why I'm not being too aggressive against Jarvan. Ooh, we're gonna cut him off. We know he's here, and that's a good knock up right there. Disengaging a fight. Uh, we're still behind by a kill because of my stupidity on two parts But we actually are catching up in terms of farm if you look at the gold difference. We have 5k dif uh, gold difference That means we're basically just two kills behind right there uh, Which is not good actually 
we should be a kill behind in terms of gold. That's too bad. Okay, now we're... Uh, yeah, the money goal. The money advantage keeps changing, and I keep missing creep too. Jeez. Whatever. Chris is dominating Soul Soul, in my opinion. He did pick up a bunch of kills on him top top lane. And, like, look at Soul Soul. He's 0 and 3, and Renekton, even though he's 1, 1 and 2, even if you don't have kills up on your enemy, as long as they have more deaths, it means that they weren't in lane for a while, and that means that they lose out on, lose out on creep experience in addition to creep gold. Ooh, good flash by Soul Soul right there. He basically just expended a, I mean, wasted a Mumu ult and Renekton ult, and a Mumu ult is a really long CD, is... 135 seconds left, so in the next more than two minutes, Amumu will be kind of useless in team fights if team fights do occur. Since he doesn't have his massive ult, like that's the main reason why Amumu is so effective. It's not because of his grab, it's not because of his damage output, it's because of his AoE stun, AoE root, not stun. And that's just a, such a perfect skill to have, especially when you're playing with Renekton and Katarina who have really good AoE damage. Ooh. Yeah, we go in and fight him here. Cho'Gath missed his uh, missed his silence. If he did hit silence on me, I think it would have taken us a little bit longer to kill him. And if it took us a little bit longer to kill him, I would have definitely gotten out. But Amumu would have definitely died. He just needed one more turret shot. And he definitely would have died. So uh, bad play by Cho'Gath there, being as <laughs> bad play. So let's see how we are doing on farm right now, Cho'Gath. Is still behind me by basically a creep wave. I'm not really pulling ahead in terms of farm, but I did catch up. I do have two kills now after I picked up one on Cho'Gath mid and somewhere else. Oh yeah, I picked up a Cho'Gath kill here and I picked up a Cho'Gath here, uh, kill here as well. So that helped me out a lot. I'm back in the game right now. I'm just as much of a, th of a threat, if not more than a threat, uh, than Cho'Gath is. And that's what your main priority is. When you're playing against an enemy and you're uh, when you're playing against your counterpart, your goal is to be more potent than your counterpart. For example, Mumu will want to be more of a threat than Jarvan is. Bot lane will want to be bot lane and be more of a threat than the other bot lane is. And of course, Renekting will want to be more of a threat than, than the Nidalee is. And once this occurs, once you are ahead, then you can assume that you won your lane. Like, it doesn't really matter if you lose a turret or not. It's just who is more of a threat. Like... For all I know, I could be 30 CS up on Cho'Gath and have 3 kills on him, but his entire team can come and take out mid turret. And just because my mid turret's down and his isn't, doesn't mean that he won the lane. It only means that his team uh, used their, gathered their resources and came mid and to take out the turret. I'm still more of a threat than Cho'Gath is, even if they take out the turret. It's just that they gain more, uh, more control over the map because we no longer have a turret. So... And Mumu gets ganked here. I try to help him out, but I really can't. Uh, I get silenced. I did try to ult. As you can see, there's a little art ult image particle art behind me. So, fail ulted and couldn't save Mumu. Mumu just got caught. They were able to take out Jana. Yeah. Ezreal should have realized that he wasn't. He would not be able to kill him and should have gotten out a lot earlier. Uh, I don't think he could kill Ezreal if Ezreal got out earlier. Like Graves really had too much HP. Uh, that's another good skill to have, learning whether or not you're going to be able to win a fight or not. Being able to notice that sooner can be really beneficial. For example, just like, wow, they just killed Blitzcrank, most likely Dovim or something. But anyways, ooh, watch this. This is stupid. I make another stupid play because of this. Notice how I keep dodging his skill shots. Okay, watch. He's going to throw another one down. I wait for it, and I jump over him so I can dodge it. And I keep chasing because I'm like, actually, no. Yes, I do. I do keep chasing. See, I dodge the silence again, I go in, but I get slowed. I did not know Janna was here. I had, was If Janna was not here, I would have definitely caught up to Cho'Gath and killed him because I have extra movement speed even though they have Janna since I have movement speed quits. But I was not paying attention. I completely forgot that they had killed Janna earlier in lane. So that means she went back, she just respawned, and she was going to come in and help because I was fighting Cho'Gath here. Uh, another tidbit. A uh, tip is when you're fighting someone, try to kill them as quickly as possible. The longer you take to, to kill them, the more time you are giving the enemy time to uh, back them up. Oof. Yeah. So it took me too long to kill Chorograph because of that general was able to come and she was able to shield him and save him and subsequently kill me. So that was a really bad play on my part. I should not have dove. Uh, dove Chorograph. The moment I he went under the turret, I should not have dove. Uh, 
Actually, I normally would have do uh, dove in. I normally would have dived if uh, if Geno was not. Actually, I would have always dived. It would not have made a difference. I d it definitely would have dived. I know that I could kill Krogov, and I know that his skills are on CD and that he can't kill me. I just was not watching the map and completely forgot that Janna was alive and would be able to help Cho'Gath. And Chris is fighting AD in Italy. Ooh, long ranged. Oh, oh, the plays. Oh, he missed. Uh, the creep killed him. Nicely done. Nicely done. That was a really good, really good play. Really good play. Anywho, um, I think I forced Cho'Gath back. But, okay, here's, here's another issue with this game right now. Uh, even though Cho'Gath did get a great lead on me and even though I am a little bit ahead of him what he did what Cho'Gath did wrong this game was that he built AP look at his items he has a death fire grasp and two Doran's rings and when you do that you're setting yourself up as the AP carry and great Cho'Gath does a ton of magic damage with his skill set and on top of that he gets really tanky passively just uh, well not tanky he gets a lot of HP passively from his ult but Here's the problem with AP Cho'Gath. His skills don't outclass other mages. Great, he has two forms of AoE CC and a ton of damage if cast correctly. Great, but he doesn't have the same uh, potential and ease of use that other mages have. Like, for example, Cat, probably one of the easiest to use champions in the game. She may not be the easiest to play, but she's the easiest to use. Every single one of her skills is just... You click on a target and you hit them. You can't miss your target. It's impossible. There's no skill shots aside from her ult, which you can't really consider a skill shot since uh, it's whatever is in the general area. It's more like an AoE. Anyways, <laughs> none of her skills are. Sorry, I coughed and moved that up. None of her skills are skill shot based. No skill required to cast any of her spells. On the other hand, Choga requires a lot of skill to cast two of his main damage spells and if he misses any of them the cooldown is extremely long so that means he becomes completely useless after that so that's the problem with playing ap Cho'Gath. you do deal a ton of damage but you have to land every single skill shot and at higher level play when everyone's so mobile and everyone's such a great player and knows exactly how to dodge spells like for example when i was chasing down Cho'Gath here i dodged every single one of his spells I shoot both behind him to dodge his silence i waited for his rupture and shoot both behind him so i can dodge his rupture as well and I just I was able to dodge all of his skills. It doesn't matter how good he was, he is. I would still have no problem dodging it because I have Shunpo and he doesn't. Well, of course he doesn't have Shunpo. But anyways, ooh, nice try. See, there's there's that bunch of magic damage right there. Like I die, probably would have died if he nailed that uh, rupture right there. But it's just he's. You'll see later why I don't. Uh, why AP Chokov was not the best way to go. Another problem with going AP Chokov this game is because his team doesn't have, he doesn't have a, they don't have a reliable tank. Like look at Jarvan's uh, build, he does have, he is kind of tanky, but he isn't straight up tank. He's uh, playing more of a tanky DPS type champion, and those kind of champions can still get taken out. And that's where Katarina shines. If Katarina isn't playing against a really tanky team, she can completely destroy all five of them if they're not tanky at all. And none of them are really tanky. Look at Sol Sol, he's going AD Nidalee, not going tank Nidalee. Uh, Cho'Gaf is going AP, Graves is an AD carry, and Janna is a support, so she's naturally squishy. Janna DCs here, I think. A really stupid play by her. Not, well, not, it's not her fault. She DC'd. You can't really control DCs. But they just basically lost in Oracles, and they gave me a kill. So basically, for, for our team as a whole, that was 700 gold right there, if you include the 300 kills. I mean, 300 gold from kill, not including assist, uh, assist gold, and on top of that, 400 gold from an oracles. So that was definitely worth it for us, but really unfortunate for Janna. I actually thought Janna was trying to initiate something, trying to flash over and uh, ult someone back into her team, but I guess she DC'd or something. Anyways, so bot lane lost. Um, Graves, in in the sense that Graves is definitely a much bigger threat than Ezreal is. He has 32 CS on top of Ezreal. He, has, he took the turret, and he has two kills and an assist on Ezreal. So, definitely Graves is a larger threat. Graves won his lane. As for top lane, Renekton is actually losing in terms of CS to Nidalee, but he does have kills and he doesn't have assists, and that's what keeps him keeps him ahead of Nidalee in terms of gold. No, I lied. Nidalee is actually ahead in terms of gold. Uh, I probably did not count dragons that they took, and 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't count the dragons that they took. But just look at that right there. She's zero six and two. He's two one and four. Naturally, one would think that Renekton would definitely be in the lead. That's what I thought. But Nidalee actually has more gold than he does. Three hundred, basically three hundred more gold than he does. That's like a she's basically a kill ahead of him. That's ridiculous. That's the power of taking dragons right there. I think they took basically almost every single dragon. I, I do remember us taking one, one though, but I think they took every other one. Oof. He has a ward here, so he knows that I was taking it. Oh, there's a fight going on bot. He's going to die. Oh, there's the flash. Nice grab. And... Ooh, nice ult. Can I pick up a kill here? Okay, he flashes, and I go after... Janna, because Janna came in and tried to save Jarvan, and that was her mistake. She shouldn't have tried to save Jarvan. Because of that, I picked up a kill on her. It's just, yeah, just that. I can't chase after Graves. Graves is too far away. Uh, Amumu gets killed by the massive AP damage of Cho'Gath. And I back off because I know that I can't handle either one of them. Um, even if I try to go kill Jarvan, uh, Cho'Gath has too much CC for me to handle. And then, so I just back off. I pick up, I take my kill, and I leave. Chris <laughs> is completely dominating Soul Soul. He's, he is a level ahead. Even though Soul Soul does have 300 gold up on him, so, uh, Chris does have that extra EX, EXP that they got from uh, being in lane longer than she does. So that's where the being dead for a, lo a much longer time gets taken into account. Uh, they took Dragon again, so yet again they're pulling ahead in terms of gold. Yeah, she's it's, it's still... Actually, they're catch he's catching up on gold in terms with Nidalee. As for me and Cho'Gath, Cho'Gath has 600 gold up on me, so I'm losing to him in terms of gold. Uh, Threat-wise, we're about the same in terms of threat. Simply because Katarina is just so much easier to play than Chogaf is without having any skill shots. Ooh, nice grab. Ooh, and we're going to pick up a kill here. Look at that massive magic damage. Either way, he's still dead. Jarvan's chasing. Jarvan should not chase. I'm here now. So he realizes that and he backs off. And Nidalee comes. And we're waiting for her. We know she's coming because we saw her through the ward. But... She saw me, and so I was like, okay, whatever. I do jump on the ward, I throw my Gunblade onto her, slowing her down, and hoping my teammates will be able to grab her, but unfortunately that was not possible. Ooh, so, so. See, that was a really bad play by, really bad play by Blitzcrank there. He should not have gone over uh, as soon as we left him. He didn't have any teammates to help him out. In a 1v1 situation, of course Blitzcrank would lose to Nidalee, but in this situation here, we had four players. We have Anmumu, and we had... Renekton. Renekton comes around. And there's also me as well. But Blitzpink got caught by himself. He he isolated himself by running in that direction because of that. So also nearly killed him. My gun blade's down so I can't really catch her. I have to rely on jumping on minions to, ca uh, to try to kill her. And she is going to go through the jungle. I think we're going to try to cut her off. We do have people on all sides. If they all pay attention. Notice how I ping it. Always ping when you're chasing because there's a high possibility that you won't be able to catch them and that you're going to need your teammates to help. Unfortunately... Ooh, man, look at that magic damage. He's definitely dead. And we pick up this kill. We trade Red Zero Four, Chogaf, and they take out bot lane. We chase after Nidalee, but there's no point. We know that we can't cha catch Nidalee. You can't catch Nidalee. And we notice that bot lane is getting pushed down. So we're like, oh, geez, we have to go right now. And so I'm going down. Chris is going down. They're definitely going to try to take this inhibitor. Uh, it's Even if we kill both of them, if they take that inhibitor, they're still ahead. They get... They got a turret and an inhibitor. That means they get automatic pressure, and that's definitely worth it for them. We take out Jana here, and we definitely take out Graves here. There's no way he can get out unless he has flash. Does he have flash? He doesn't have flash. And his sash is down as well. He bought a sash just for a Mumu, which is a really good item. Sash is a really good item uh, if the enemy is really heavy in terms of CC. And we catch Jarvan here. And we, he has a red buff, and on top of that, he has a phage. So this is like a perma slow for us. Notice how I walk around. <laughs> because I'm assuming that he's going to jump off. Yep. So I foresee that. I put a ward down, I hop on it, and I throw my Q and my ignite on him. And he dies. So uh, I remember in all chat, he was like, no. And I'm like, yes. And that's a, that's another great skill to have. Being able to foretell what your enemy is going to do based on what kind of champion they are. Like, for example, he's playing Jarvan. That means, naturally, if he's trying to escape... He would try to get as close to a wall as he can to cut us off and jump over it with his skill. I knew he was doing that as soon as he run up, run, ran up toward the race, and so I ran around the race to 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 counter that. Anyways, 
So that happens. Notice how I don't try to fight at all. I try to get out as quickly as possible. I know my teammates will take out Jana for me, so I just back out uh, as soon as they kill Jana and my skills are set. Chris barely survives here. His I don't even know how he survived that, but he survived it. Graves tries to kill us, but he doesn't have any vision here because of that. We're able to barely take him out. He took he he got one shot off on me on onto me, but I did have that extra damage reduction, so it wasn't was not able to kill me. And with that one shot, I think maybe he could have if he crit. I'm not sure, but either way, I survived. <laughs> Actually, no, he couldn't have killed me. He doesn't have an infinity edge, so he doesn't have that extra damage. And we're gonna ca Nidalee's definitely gonna die here. Does Ezreal does Ezreal have Trinity Force? Actually, never mind. <laughs> Nidalee's just too hard to catch. They should not be. Yeah. Don't try to chase someone down. Chris stayed way too long. He was low on HP after that fight, and he went bot to farm. And because of that, he lost his life when Jarvan went to gank bot, which is really dumb. You just really shouldn't do that. And now they're in, they're in position to take uh, Baron now, because all five of them are up, and we have, we're missing one champion, one player. And it's 27 minutes into the game, and their bot lane's automatically pushing, and mid lane's pushing, and these guys are backing, and I think they know that. So they're in a great position to Baron right now, and I'm. Yeah, I'm just, at this moment, I'm just like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? They're definitely going to take Baron. Again, like I said, if you know that, the enemy, you can see the images right there, that they're doing it. But, like I said, if you know that, the enemy is taking a big, uh, there's blood coming out of that? Whatever. Anyways, if you know that the enemy is taking an objective, like Baron or Dragon, and you know that you can't stop them, like, I knew that I could not stop all five of them by myself. Uh, I'm not fed at all. I don't deal that much damage. So I just let them have it. There's no point in giving them a kill and Baron as well. And because I didn't go and get myself killed, we can actually defend the inner turret because there's five of us right now. And so this isn't looking great for us. They have Baron. I don't know what the heck that was for. There was only a Mumu. She was trying to... What Janna was trying to do uh, was disengage at the turret, push everyone back so, so that her teammates can go and take out the turret and subsequently take the inhibitor. Unfortunately, there was only a Mumu there. So that was kind of a waste. I completely don't destroy them in this fight. Quadra kill. Penta kill. Yeah, great. Whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that was Janna's huge mistake right there. If she didn't waste her ult, she could have ulted me right there. And that would have completely stopped me from using my ult. And that would have stopped me from killing her and would have stopped my Penta kill as well. Probably, I probably definitely would have died. We might have lost that fight. So Janna did a really bad play there by wasting her ult on on just clearing the turret so now we're back in the game even though we are we're behind in terms of gold uh, we lost our turrets a bunch of turrets and we lost baron buff we lost a bunch of dragons but because of that play because i was able to pick up a pentakill and that we only lost one player we were able to take the inhibitor and now we're even in terms of inhibitors and we took a turret and now we're catching up in terms of gold really quickly just because of that that play right there and we know that Dra baron is down already so that we don't we don't have to back immediately. Um, usually, once you take an inhibitor, if Baron is up, you have to get out as quickly as possible. You have to heal, get ready for a counter Baron attempt. Because usually what people like to do is if the enemy pushes, and like if the enemy wins a team fight, and they push, proceed to push uh, at the current HP that they're at, which is the aftermath of a team fight, so they're probably going to be pretty low, and they push, then they have to go back. They can't 5v5 when they're low. And when they go back, you can go and attempt Baron and take Baron while they're trying to heal and trying to pick up stuff. Look, they pick up another dragon. So in this case, since Baron is down, we didn't really need to go back uh, and heal as much as we really had to. Fortunately now, both our inhibitors are up. Uh, we still have a little bit of pressure from these super minions. So, But we do have our own pressure mid, so we don't really have to worry too much about mid right now. So right now, it's just a battle of attrition. They're still ahead of us because they still have basically 5k gold ahead of us. So what we need to do is we need to catch them again. Just just like that pentacle I got, we need one more of that. If that happens again, we will win. And we try to get something here. Oof, that was nice. Pick up that ult. I jump in and I ult pointlessly and I get CC'd really hard and I get killed. But, because they were wasting all their skills on me, the rest of my team takes them out. See, the later game it gets, um, this is usually how the game works. The later the, ga uh, the game gets, the weaker AP carries become and the stronger AD carries become. AD carries become the most important uh, players in the game at endgame usually. It's already 30 minutes into the game, it's 
almost it's about mid late game right now so this is the moment where my ability as an AP carry drops down and as his importance as an AD carry goes up so uh, he, as needs to step step up his game if he had any in the first place and just and just carry me like I can't do anything now I even though I do have 12 kills and four assists I mean 12 kills and five assists I can't really do much as soon as it gets to late game because when it gets to late game my damage is I'm as much of a threat as Cho'Gath is that's basically how this is that's that's how I'm gonna put it right there like even if you win your lane no matter how hard you win your lane if you take it to 60 minutes and actually here let me give a better example right now you are in a game, you carry, you go 20 and 0 in lane, you completely dominate your enemy, but the rest of your team fails completely, and this happens a lot. It, it, it happens to me too, all the time. But let's just say you have 20 kills and 0 deaths, and you completely win your lane and completely destroy the enemy jungle when he tries to gank. But the rest of your lane loses, and because of that, you have a really difficult time carrying, and the game gets to 60 minutes. And when it's 60 minutes, everyone basically has all of their items. And when everyone has all of their items and is level 18, it doesn't matter how fed you were in the beginning. You're as powerful as everyone else is. And that's how you lose games, by dragging games out and as Katarina. So when you're playing Katarina, never drag the game out. Try to, when you're ahead, like I was after that pentakill, try to fight as much as possible. Try to push as hard as you can. I get killed here by that Ignite and Graves, like I said, AD carry being a monster late game. Completely destroys them and we lose Renekton and we lose Amumu because Graves don't let Amumu is there. Graves is going to heal off these, uh, these, the red buff right now. See, look at that. He barely had any HP and now he's back to almost half and he can definitely easily take out Amumu by himself. So that's what we're seeing right there. And there we go, dead. <laughs> yep. That's the power of an AD carry right there. So my priority as AP carry late game is to take out that AD carry. I have to take out the largest threat. I, as the AP carry, am not as much of a threat as the AD carry is. And because of that, it's definitely worth it. It's like chess. It's like you're playing chess. When it's late game, it's chess. Everyone has the same pieces. Everyone's on an even playing ground, um, of course. But of course, the based on champions. If you have terrible champion matchup and a terrible team composition, that, that that's definitely gonna that's definitely gonna change things. But when it's late game, it's basically like chess in terms where everyone has the same pieces, everyone has the same power, and if you're able to trade a pawn for a queen, that is definitely worth it. That's basically like losing a support while kill, killing the AD carry. That's how. That's how this game works, just like chess. So me, as the AP carry, at late game, AD carry is basically the queen in terms of chess. At late game, the AP carry is basically like a rook. So if you can trade a rook for a queen late game, that's that's great, that's awesome. And that's exactly what you want. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want, as the rook, to be able to kill the AD carry. So my job right now is to focus uh, Graves as much as possible. Try to take him out. Does he have GA yet? If he does, that just makes my game. Oh. <laughs> that just makes it even harder for me, because he has two queens, and there's only one rook. All right. I'm. Mm, we're still behind 5k gold. We haven't really caught up that much. Moon was trying to force a fight, but really that pentakill right there really turned this game around. That really made it even. They were really ahead of us. With, before that pentakill, kill. They had an, one inhibitor on us, they had baron buff on us, they had a ton of dragons on us, but because of that pentakill, we were able to basically freeze the fight. Notice here that they don't have a ward here, so I'm able to catch Janna out of position. Kill her, kill Italy, and I'm trying to kill Graze right here, that's why I just walk into my own death. I get silenced, I didn't realize I got silenced, so. See? Two queens, both alive still. Oof. Unfortunately, the assist of a pawn and a queen I was able to kill the other queen. Ooh, let's see what happens here. See, this is the problem with playing a uh, AP choke after you're extremely squishy. Ezreal, if a, a good Ezreal can definitely one v one that one v one choke after and then dodge all the skill shots with his E and take him out simply because he's not playing tank. If he was playing tank, I'd be really worried. Ooh, oh, there we go. Too bad. 
silenced and ignited. Ezreal had life steal, so he should have uh, tried to attack the creep and try to heal off it. And here we go. Mumu is back after healing, and he's gonna take out Cho'Gath because his da magic damage is based on how much HP the enemy has, and Cho'Gath has a lot of HP, so the more damage he deals, and he has red buff as well. So there goes Cho'Gath, and that was a that was a good fight for us. I think that was I think that was five for three, five for three maybe. Yes, I think so. So definitely worth it for us. Baron Buff is back up now, and now that we both we have our in hips, they have their in hips. We're back to square one. Uh, even though we are three K gold behind ahead, I mean behind, it is late game. It's late game now, and so basically, like I said, it's like a chessboard, and it's whoever makes the right choices and initiates a good fight that can win the game. And like I said, team composition is extremely important. And in this situation, our team comp is based on AOE. We have a Mumu to set up an AOE ult, and then. Interacted and I have to go in and completely to dominate them. And Ezreal has to get a good ult off. And Ezreal's too far away. So here we are. 4 v uh, 5 probably. <laughs> Without Ezreal. I don't know what Ezreal's doing. Oh yeah, Cho'Gap's dead, so it's 4v4. Never mind. My bad. And we're gonna regroup. There's no point in us trying to take Baron. We know that they can dominate us, and without, we'll be taking too much damage from Baron buff. And they don't have any vision here, so it's good for us. We don't know that they, they they don't have vision. Actually, we do know because we have we do have oracles on Blitzcrank. So, oh, yeesh. Chris thought Jana got caught uh, was out of position, which she kind of was, and he went in on her. Fortunately, because of that, I was able I was able to take out Nidalee, who was out of position. And there we go. Take out their queen. Uh, doesn't matter if Chokov has Gia. He's still squishy. He's still playing AP, but. Look at that damage right there. I just got completely discharged just with just with the one skill of his. But he's still really squishy and he's pretty easy to kill. And so we still have Ezreal and they already lost all. Of, they have everything except for Janna. And so we're we're gonna take this inhib. We're probably gonna take another inhib. They can actually end the game. I do believe they can end the game because they do have a Janna. So Janna can't really defend. Does she even have her ult? No, she doesn't have her ult, so she can't really stop them. And she has absolutely no damage output, so she can't really. She can't even kill our weakest player, which is Blitzcrank. So I think this is game right here. And that last two, yep, that's still playing game right there. They're gonna, they're not gonna pick up. So GG, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys wanna see more, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be putting up more Katarina slash Zinjiao slash any kind of ranked games I have that I wanna show you guys. Simply because I don't stream anymore and that I had, do have some time to do these kind of things since it is summer. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I'm so tired. By the way, remember, um, every single month, one lucky subscriber will win $10 in Riot points uh, from me picking them out of a hat. So yeah, please subscribe and like my videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.